morning, grade nines. We're going to get straight to our next poem now. So hopefully you've got your notebooks with you and turn to the poetry section. And after the last poem that we looked at, I wanted to write a nice big heading sonnets. And we're going to look at a specific type of poem today. And that is the sonnet form. Now it's very important that you understand this work because it is not only grade 9 work, but it's grade 10, 11 and 12 work. So, same information, it doesn't change. Learn it now this year and then you will be set. So, in front of you on the screen, you should see a table. And the heading of the table is Features of Sonnets. So, I want you to write that down in your notebook. And then I want you to redraw the tape that I have here um, on the screen. Although it is on your tablets, it needs to be in your notebook as well. And then I would even do a post and put it up on my wall so I can see it every day and remind myself of the features of a sonnet. Now, a sonnet is a 14-line poem. Um, it has to have 14 lines. It cannot have any other number of lines. But it's not only the 14 lines, because not every 14-line poem will be a sonnet. It has to follow the features of a sonnet. So we are going to look at two different kinds, a Shakespearean sonnet and a Petrarchan sonnet. A Shakespearean sonnet is also called an English sonnet. And it is divided into three quatrains. A quatrain is four lines long and a rhyming couplet. And that's how you will know it is a Shakespearean sonnet, by the rhyming couplet at the end. Have a look at the rhyme scheme. It, every Shakespearean sonnet will follow the same format. So it is A, B, A, B, quatrain 1, C, D, C, D, quatrain 2, E, F, E, F, quatrain 3, and then G, G, which is the rhyming couplet. <clears throat> the rhythm of a Shakespearean sonnet is written, uh, it is written in iambic pentameter, so it is 10 beats per line, 5 stressed and 5 unstressed. And then sometimes you will see in line 8 or 9 there will be a turn. Now the turn is the change in the poem. So it can be a change in attitude, a change in tone. Um, but the, um, something will indicate a change. So it could be a punctuation mark, it could be a conjunction. You just need to look out for that change. Not every Shakespearean sonnet will have a turn. Um, only if it requires one in the content of the poem. And then we are looking at a Petrarchan sonnet or an Italian sonnet. Um, yeah, the poem is divided into an octave and a sestet. So you have eight lines and then six lines. Um, the rhyme scheme is A, B, B, A, A, B, B, A for the octave and then C, D, C, D, C, D for the sestet. Now, please take notes. If you have a look at the rhyme scheme for an English sonnet, sonnet, the last two lines rhyme, but in an Italian sonnet, the last two lines do not rhyme. So if you are asked in an exam to identify the type of sonnet, the very first thing you're going to do is look for the rhyming couplet at the end. And if there is one, it is a Shakespearean sonnet, and if there isn't one, then it's not a Shakespearean sonnet, it's an Italian sonnet. Right, so an Italian sonnet is also written in iambic pentameter, and just so that you I know a clue, all sonnets are written in our epic pentameter. Here's what gives the poem its nice poetic feel. And then in an Italian sonnet in lines 8 or 9, there um, will be a volta in line 8 or 9. Again, it's the change as we move from the octave into the sestet. Now, octave is normally dealing with a problem or a situation, and then the sestet comes to a resolution or an acceptance of whatever the problem was. Again, not always, it won't always necessarily be there. It just depends what if, if the content of the poem warrants it. So there, grade nines, the features of a sonnet. Please familiarize yourself, learn it, write your notes in your books before you look at the next video, which will deal with a specific kind of sonnet. Have a good day. Goodbye.